Hey, hey, it is Zenial Gamer, and today we're going to be talking about speed tuning. Don't let the Leo in the background confuse you. I'm using this particular team just as a quick opening example for what we're going to be talking about. Now, before I start this fight, let's start with the most basic but the most important question. What is speed tuning? Speed tuning is basically ruining your monsters to go in a specific turn order so that each monster benefits the one that follows it. Now there are several different ways that you might accomplish this. You could do it with an attack bar booster, with an attack bar reducer, with a Leo like we have going here, or simply by setting up the speeds. And we're going to go through each of those ways and talk about how you set it up. But first, I'm showing you this battle to show you why speed tuning matters. So if you look at the team I have here, we're running Leo with Bastet and two Lucians. Now, one of the Lucians has Will Runes and one does not. Obviously, when my Lucians go, I want them to be attack buffs so they do the maximum damage. That means Bastet needs to go before the Lucians. Now, Leo's passive is going to allow, allow him to go first. And what we're going to do is look at the enemy team and realize that their speed tuning is centered on Bernard. Bernard will be the fastest monster. So we're going to use Leo to reduce the attack bar of Bernard. And then we need our Bastet to go next so that she can attack buff both of my Lucians, which she does. She's also, in this case, going to allow my Lucians to act now before the enemy team. Now, notice again, one Lucian has will and one does not. I need the one without will runes to go first, because when the Samanth dies, he's going to come back with his Rageful Revenge, and he has the opportunity to skill reset. So we go with the Lucian that does not have will. We clear most of the team, which is perfect. And now we can go with the Lucian that does have will because the Rageful Revenge didn't mess us up. And from there, we can just auto out. Now, obviously, Leo changes things on this uh, team, and that's why we're doing this video, because we're going to talk more about speed tuning with monsters when you're not using a guy with an OP passive. We're also going to talk about how you can speed tune in the optimizer because it does a lot of the work for you. Okay, now let's look at a team that does not use Leo. So obviously we want Bastet to go first. She's going to attack Bar Boost. And we want Barbara to go second so that Ciara can barm so that Ciara can bomb whatever Barbara strips. Because otherwise, if the whole enemy team has immunity, has will runes, and Ciara is acting second, then she's wasting her turn. She can't bomb anything. So we start with our attack bar boost and our attack buff. And in this case, the Rakan is really the primary enemy damage, but it already has will runes. And so my Ciara can't do anything to it. So I can go ahead and strip it with Barbara, hopefully. We got the strip. And now we can go ahead and barm it. First of all, the word is bomb, not barm. Second of all, that really didn't help make my point. <laughs> but no, you guys get the idea. Like if I wanted to kill that Rakan, but Barbara was slower than Ciara, I would not have even had a chance to miss the bomb. And actually the last thing that I didn't mention with this team is we want Triana to go last so that she puts immunity up. So imagine if Triana was acting second. She would put immunity up, and then as soon as Ciara and Barbara went, they would have lost their immunity. So you usually want Triana to be the slowest monster on your team. Now, with your healers, you can take one of two strategies. If it's a healer and a buffer, like Fran, for example, you usually want them to go first because Fran's going to give you attack bar boosting. If it's a cleanser and immunity type, you usually want them to go last because they can cleanse whatever the enemy's done and leave your whole team with immunity. Now, if it's a multi-turn immunity monster like Wusa, you might want it to go first, especially because Wusa has high base speed. So honestly, with every kind of support monster, there's going to be different roles, but you typically are going to want them to go either first or last based on the role they serve. Okay, now let's talk about how you actually speed tune. Now guys, the next two minutes are going to be math, and if you don't like math, I'm going to tell you this part is not actually important because the optimizer will do it for you, but I do want to explain what the optimizer is doing. So feel free to jump ahead a couple of minutes if you're not interested in the math behind it, but it really does help it, your speed tuning if you understand the mechanics behind it. So in the bottom left corner here, you'll see this little spreadsheet that shows us on the far right combat speed, which you also see on the optimizer above me, the combat speed. So let's start off by talking about what is combat speed. Well, basically, every monster has its base speed. It has the speed that's added through rune subs, and, then it, and that also includes speed added by Swift, by the way. And then we have our speed towers, and then we have possibly a speed lead. 
When you put all of that together, you get the monster's combat speed. It's the actual speed of the monster in the game. So for example, if you look up at the top, you can see that my Bastet is 294 speed in game, but she's 333 combat speed because we're adding 15% speed for my max speed tower and 24 speed for the Ciara. Now, if you look at the spreadsheet below, the formula is wrong. Now, if you look at the spreadsheet below, you might notice I had a typo in there, I just fixed it. You'll see that her combat speed is actually 332.61, which rounds off to 333. So specifically, the speed tower adds 15% of her base speed. So we're gonna jump over to CR because she has 100 base speed. It's a much easier demonstration. Ciara's got 143 speed from rune subs. She gets an extra 15 speed because it's 15% from my tower and she gets an extra 24 speed because it's 24% from her own speed lead. That gives her a combat speed of 282. Now combat speed is what actually determines monster order unless two monsters are tied and then it would be slot, but we'll get to that in a minute. So the fastest combat speed is the monster that's gonna go first. Now when you're speed tuning, there are three ways that you can actually speed tune a team. One of them is to keep all of the monster's speeds relatively close together. One of them is to use an attack bar booster and one of them is to use an attack bar reducer. So for example, Triton is an attack bar reducer. He strips the enemy team and reduces their attack bar. Uh, we're not gonna talk about attack bar reduction as much in this video because it's not as reliable. It's definitely a viable strategy, especially on defense, but on offense, it's not so much because it goes through accuracy checks, so speed tuning can wind up falling apart. So for this video, we're gonna be focusing on the attack bar boosting and on keeping your monster's runes close together. So look at the screen again, and you will see that we've got Bastet marked as an attack bar booster right here, 25%. Now I am in the optimizer, I'm on the speed tune tab, and if you don't have the optimizer or know how to install it, I'm gonna put a link in the description down below uh, to a video that Aced it Gaming did, which shows you how to install it, it's a great video. So in the speed tuning tab, if I wanted to change Bastet's attack bar boosting, let's say make it 30%, now, if you look, it's kind of grayed out right now, but right now it says Ciara speed minimum is 250, right? When I do that, it drops to 241, and that's because she's getting more attack bar boost. Now, obviously, Bastet's attack bar boost cannot change. As far as I know, only Bernard's can when you skill him up. So he's the only one you would really need to change in here. Otherwise, the game's gonna have it by default. The other one that uh, could change, but the optimizer doesn't recognize her, is Barbara, and her attack bar boost is variable. And it's not reliable at all because it's based on damage done, so it's not something I would recommend using for speed tuning purposes. Okay, now we're gonna look at our team and we're gonna decide what attack order we want. So as I mentioned earlier, we always want our attack bar booster to go first, we want our stripper to go next, and then between Ciara and Mash, it doesn't actually make a huge difference. This is, by the way, not a team I would use um, in the game itself. I'm using it just to demonstrate speed tuning purposes because Masha has such a crazy high speed. So we're gonna go ahead and just say that we want Masha to act last. So we see that it says, oops, too fast for this slot. And when we look, we see Ciara's speed is 243 and Masha is 239. So why is she too fast? So if you look back down at that spreadsheet in the bottom, you'll see that Masha's combat speed is actually 341 because she has that huge base speed and speed towers and speed leads multiply base speed only. So even though Ciara has faster runes, once you put in a speed lead, she's gonna outspeed Masha. Now what happens if I turn off Ciara's speed lead? We'll see that Masha's combat speed is 257.45, Ciara's 258, the game rounds it up. So Ciara is gonna be going first because they're both at 258 combat speed without that speed lead. So the speed lead changes things a lot. When you're speed tuning, especially if you're not using the optimizer, remember that base speed matters. Uh, with monsters like Ganymede in particular, because you usually want him to go second or third at most on your team, and he has a huge base speed. You have to be careful that you leave a big enough speed gap in your team that you have that flexibility to use or not use the speed lead as is appropriate. Now the second question we have to ask is why does speed tuning even matter? 
So here's the thing, we build our teams to do a specific sequence of actions in a specific order. And when the enemy cuts us, when the enemy acts in between two of our monsters, it can change the entire outcome of the fight. So let's take a look at the team that I've got set up right now. This is an arena team that I used to use. It's Bastet, Kali, Ciara, and Odin. Now you might notice that the team is actually not speed tuned right now. It's because I don't use this team that often anymore but it does provide a great example of why speed tuning is important. So let's take a quick look at how it works in the arena. Okay, so to this point, all I've really talked about is speed tuning in terms of your team acting in a certain order to benefit each other. But there's another aspect of that as well. And that is you don't want the enemy team to cut. You want all of your monsters to go in one turn in a row. So when we look at the teams that we have right here, that Tiana's attack bar is basically the same as my Bastet, which means that she's actually faster than my Bastet because I have a speed lead, but I have a faster combat speed because I have a speed lead. So the Tiana may wind up catching up and cutting because my team is not speed tuned perfectly. As you saw on the screen before, my Odin is uh, about 10 speeds slower than he would need to be to be speed tuned right now. So what would happen here if I were to attack bar boost and then that Tiana were to cut? Well, that Tiana would strip away all of the buffs that I just put on and then she'd attack bar boost her own team and the Jean would take control of me and the Oki would stun me and I would lose. So it's really important that all of my monsters go in a row. Now so right. when we're speed tuning, the two goals that we have First is to make sure that our monsters act in the order we want them to act. Second is to make sure that they all act in a row and the enemy does not act in between any of them. That allows us to complete the combination of actions that we're trying to accomplish. In this case, for me, it was to kill two of the enemy monsters. Now, the second way you can speed tune is by just simply making your monster speeds as close as possible and then making sure they act in the correct turn order. So here's an example of a team that I use in Guild War and Siege Offense a lot, which is Fran, Daphnis, and Ciara. Now in this case, I need my Fran to go first because I need the attack buff on Daphnis. I want Daphnis to go second because he has that strip component. And then if Daphnis misses the defense break, he may not kill the enemy, but he may have stripped. Then Ciara gets to come in and finish off the kill. Now, if my Ciara was really slow or my Daphnis was really fast, so let's say Ciara, we put her at 220. Now the combat speed is 25 speed slower than Daphnis. So if the enemy were to cut in between, it might heal back up from all the damage Daphnis just did, and then maybe Ciara can't get the kill. And then I'm at a disadvantage because I've already used my skill threes and the enemy is back to full health. So this brings us to the question of how do you actually speed tune so many monsters together? The way I do it is by kind of identifying what the monster's purpose is and what types of monsters it's most likely to go with. So if you look at my speeds right here, my fastest monster is Bernard, 296, then Bastet, Draco, Orion, what do they all have in common? Obviously they are all attack bar boosters. So your attack bar booster is generally what you always want to go first, but obviously if I was running Triton or Tiana on a regular basis, I would want them to be even faster than my attack bar booster. Because, well, in the case of Triton, it doesn't matter as much, except it's just easier to make him fast because of his base speed. In the case of Tiana, Let's say you go with Bastet and then you go with Tiana. What did you just do? You just stripped your own team. So obviously you need your Tiana to go first and then Bastet goes afterwards so that you're not stripping your own buffs. And then we see Fran and Wusa who are both immunity, multi-turn immunity, that's important. Right after that is a stripper. So basically we want our attack bar boosters to go first, we want our immunity buffers to go next, and then we want our strippers to go after that. So we move forward a couple of pages and then we find Ganny and you see my Ganny is only 236. And the reason for that is because Ganny needs to act behind my strippers. So the types of monsters I run them with, for example, my Triton is 250 on despair. So I don't want Ganny to be any faster actually than 249. That was why I changed his runes was to slow him down. The concept here is that your boosters go first your immunity buffers and your strippers act after that and then anything that you have to like debuff the enemy so if it's aoe defense break in the case of gany it's aoe attack bar reduction they're going to go right after your strippers uh from there we get into our da damage dealers now we find our mimir our ajir our verdi our suzano theo and so forth so your damage dealers are typically going to act last now part of that is just because a lot of times they're on an attack slot too or 
just the substats are not a lot speed focused, they're crit rate focused. So, you know, obviously if you have a lot of crit rate, then you're gonna have less speed. But it also matters because if your debuffers are going in front of them, then your enemy is set up to be destroyed. So we've already reset their skills and defense broken them, now our attackers can come in. So generally speaking, you wanna kind of have a speed range. You know that, let's say your slowest stripper is in my case, it's around 250, but it doesn't matter. If Let's say in your case, it's 200 or 180. Whatever stage of game you are, it doesn't matter. But if you know that your slowest stripper is 180, then your fastest damage dealer should be around 179, unless it happens to be something like Mina that doesn't need to be set up by strip. You wanna make sure that your damage dealers are always slower than your attack buffer. So if your slowest attack buffer is 215, then your fastest damage dealer should be about 214. At the same time, if you have a preset comp that you do always use together, then it's okay to go outside the range. For example, Mina, Mina and Bastet. Bastet's gonna attack bar boost and attack buff. So if your Mina is faster than all of your other attack buffers, but slower than Bastet, and you always run those two together, it's fine. But if you have a monster that's just kind of in the general pool, as I view it, to make different comps to counter different siege defenses, then you wanna put them in a range where you can pair them with any of a bunch of different attack buffers. Okay, now the last topic I'm gonna to address is ticks. So you may have heard the term before, you may not have, but ticks are actually how our attack bars fill. Now this can be a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna do my best to make it simple, um, but it is, it's a more complicated, it's something that we tend to use more in endgame. So before I jump into it, let me just tell you that the optimizer handles ticks for you. Everything I've shown you to this point as far as speed tuning and the optimizer is all you actually need to know if you're using the optimizer. Understanding ticks just gives you better depth of understanding of the game and it can be really helpful in RTA. So if you click off the video at this point, I totally get it. But before you do, please remember to hit like and subscribe because it really helps me out. Okay, with that said, a tick is basically a unit measurement of time in Summoner's War. So before the fight starts, when we first go into the battle, and this is all behind the scenes, we obviously don't see it, it's just the, the way the computer, the way the game calculates it, every monster is at zero attack bar, and then every monster gains 7% of its attack bar for each tick. So we can think of ticks as like a second, you know, like a clock goes tick tock. So a tick happens, and each monster gains 7% of its attack bar. Now let's say I have 100 combat speed. That means I gain 7%. Let's say you have 200 combat speed. You gain 14% for that one tick. So it will keep ticking until a monster reaches 100% attack bar, and then it stops. So if your monster gets to 100% attack bar when I'm at 50, then obviously you have 100 and I have 50. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. It's almost like a race to 100%, because if you can get to 100% at a certain point, you hold my attack bar down because I don't get that extra tick that I needed. So on screen, we've got right here, four ticks is 358 speed. What this means is that if you have 358 speed, you reach 100% attack bar at four ticks. Now, why does 358 matter? Well, let's just say you have 357 speed. Then after four ticks, you have 99.96% attack bar, and you need one more tick to go. On the fifth tick, you now have 124.95% attack bar. But once you go, your attack bar resets to zero. So you've kind of wasted 25% of your attack bar. In the meantime, all of my monsters got that extra tick and got more attack bar, so got closer to their own turns. So the sooner you can get to 100% attack bar, the better chance you have of holding the whole enemy's attack bar down. So that's why these numbers on screen are kind of key points. Now, obviously most of us can't reach 358 combat, and remember this is combat speed, not speed. So 358 combat speed, let's go ahead and throw in a Triton just to give you an example here. A 312 speed Triton with a 24% speed lead is 358 combat speed. So it is very possible, a lot of people can make their Tritons 312 speed, but to make your best debt to 358 combat speed, it's pretty much impossible. You'd need to be somewhere around three, 320. Uh, I mean, there's a couple of best debts in the game maybe that are there, but for almost everybody, it's not possible. 
So in this case, let's say that that Triton is at 358 speed. He's going to get to 100% attack bar on the fourth tick, which keeps all my monsters from getting the attack bar from that fifth tick. But if Triton was at 357 uh, speed, then it takes him five ticks and all my monsters get an extra 7% of their speed for attack bar. Now here's where this matters for speed tuning. So let's imagine that this enemy Bastet is 299. So we're both five tick monsters. Then I'm at 105, she's at 104. But now let's change it up a little bit and let's put my Bastet, and I know this speed's not realistic, but for the case of this video, Let's put my Bastet as a four tick monster and the enemy Bastet as a five tick monster. My Bastet is 358, the enemy Bastet is 357. So I hit 100% attack bar and the enemy hits 99.96% attack bar. Now the enemy can't cut because it's not at 100%. So when I do my attack bar boost, my whole team's over 100%. And the enemy Bastet needs that extra tick in order to catch back up. So basically, when we're talking about ticks, we're talking about kind of a race to gain the most attack bar the fastest so that the enemy team gets less attack. And that's why these numbers on screen right here are really key. These are thresholds. For the most part, if you can make a Bastet like mine is 294, right? So 333 combat speed, I'm a mile away from being four tick, and I'm certainly not gonna wanna slow myself down 50 speed for five ticks. So I just make Bastet as fast as I can. But when I have a monster like Odin over here, let's say that my Odin's at 285 combat speed. So my Bastet being a five tick monster is gonna get to 100% attack bar before Odin does because he's a six tick monster. But he's a six tick monster by only one speed. So simply giving him one more speed here is effectively giving him 15% more attack bar when Bastet goes. He starts with 15% more attack bar if we just give him one more speed. Okay, so that's it for today's video. If you guys have any questions about ticks and your head didn't explode yet, I'm probably not gonna answer them in the comments. It's a hard topic to explain. It's really a very, very end game topic. Honestly, all you really need to know, the biggest takeaway is just simply understanding the game mechanic, understanding that there are gonna be some target speed numbers you're looking for. I showed you the four most common ones on screen. I'll show them you again. Uh, you can also obviously just Google Summoner's War Ticks and get a whole list of it all. But ultimately, your big takeaway here should be that you're shooting for the target numbers and combat speed, and you're gonna use the optimizer to handle the actual speed tuning. If you just take those two things away, you'll be good. And on that note, uh, guys, if you enjoyed the video, if you found it helpful, please remember to hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It really helps the channel grow, so it really helps me out and I appreciate it. I also, of course, appreciate you watching. Hope you found the video useful and, and entertaining, and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, if you're still with me to this point, then that means that you probably liked the video, found it entertaining, or even better, both. So please smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment down below because those things help the channel grow, and more importantly, they show me that the video is useful, and that's the whole reason I do this in the first place.